Thanks for listening to my presentations. I will continue on the largest organ in the body called the liver. And today I'll be going through possible differential diagnosis of enlarged liver. So, in a nutshell, today's topic will be all about hepatomegaly differential diagnosis. Let's go. Before delving into various pathological conditions, we should remind ourselves of anatomical variations that could present as heptomegaly. One, reduced lobe. This will be the kind of downward tongue-like projection of the right lobe, mimicking heptomegaly on physical examination. But the good news is it is benign. Also, we could find bevel tail liver, which is elongated left lobe. It could be confused with hepatomegaly or cirrhosis. Also, it is possible to have papillary process that may extend posteriorly between the inferior vena cava and the aorta, and could also be misdiagnosed as hepatomegaly. Now, certain pathological conditions. Polycystic liver disease in autosomal dominant adult polycystic kidney disease. That could give aftomegaly. Borkari syndrome, biliary atresia. If you haven't listened to brief anatomy and biliary system at a glance already published, Please check my channel for those two presentations. You understand everything about anatomical variations and biliary atresia. Also biliary cirrhosis and primary sclerosing cholangitis or hemangiomas. In oncology, heptomegaly could be secondary to adenomas, hepatocellular carcinoma, Collagiocellular carcinoma, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, leukemia, or even secondary metastasis. In cardiology, heptomegaly could be secondary to heart failure, particularly right heart failure. And liver infiltration with granulomas, amyloid or tumor cells, in view of the Nakava web. Caroli disease, which is an abnormal dilatation of the intrahepatic by dots. To those who have listened to my presentation on biliary system, you understand this. Okay? Right and left hepatic dots forming common hepatic before being joined by the cystic dot forming common by dot on the way to ampulla of veta of the duodenum, where sphincter of OD will help in controlling the influx into the duodenum. Okay? And of course, pancreatic dot will join at that stage. Sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, paleosis of otitis, that is blood-filled cavities throughout the liver. Woman disease is an inadequate lipid metabolism due to lysosomal enzyme deficiency, and of course, needless to say that there will be accumulation of lipid. Hemochromatosis is the buildup of excess ion in the body. Other causes of heptomegaly could be alpha 1 antitrusy deficiency. Those who are familiar with Evosema, who understand this. Gaka disease, that is rhizosomal storage disorder, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, diabetes mellitus, that is poorly controlled, leading to increased glycogen storage. And of course, wheezing disease, which is accumulation of copper, probably due to cellulopasmine deficiency and the individual will be on penicillamine for life. You can check my channel for wheezing disease. 
I have a complete presentation already published. Other conditions could include autoimmune hepatitis, drug induced hepatotoxicity, alcoholic liver disease, alcoholic hepatitis, shock liver or ischemic hepatitis. Parasitic infection like amoebic liver abscess, granulomatous hepatitis, bacterial liver abscess, acute viral hepatitis, or chronic viral hepatitis. Okay, when you have your suspicion, the next thing is how do we make the definitive diagnosis out of this large number of probable causes of heptomegaly. Then we we'll take thorough history, right? From signs and symptoms, and then we embark on physical examination. The physical examination is good to give a clue as per the definitive diagnosis of the heptomegaly. But it is usually diagnosed using ultrasound and some laboratory investigations, and even more than that inside the situation. And with the ultrasound, we'll be able to determine the size, the pathology, and polar abstention. You can have light percussion, you know, for the lower edges location. You can have heavy percussion for the upper border assessment. You can prepare it for the liver edge by getting the upper border at the fifth intercostal space and the lower border at the coastal margin. If it is less than 13 centimeter, then no heptomegaly in that adult. If you pick tenderness on preparation, you are likely dealing with acute hepatitis. You can have scratch tests done by placing the stethoscope at the lower coastal margin, scratched the abdomen. If you pick louder sound, that is heptomegaly. Ultrasound is the best, but you can make use of CT or magnetic resonance imaging. We have to pull certain conditions into consideration when we're carrying out our physical examination trying to look for the definitive diagnosis of heptomegaly or trying to look for the size of the liver, determining whether there is heptomegaly or not. When the individual is thin, you are likely going to fail certain edges of the liver, okay? During a deep inspiration, you might fail the liver downwards and you think it's far below the coastal margin. Right pleural effusion, the problem with the lung, given you know, the liver, the, the kind of presentation as if it is enlarged. Emphysema with upper inflation with diagrammatic descent will be leading to downward displacement of the liver. So in all these situations, the liver is not actually enlarged. No, there's no heptomegaly, but the physical uh, examination with precaution and preparation may give you no know, erroneous you no know, picture of heptomegaly. That is why good history, thorough physical examination, and eyes that should guide. That we need to be certain with radiological you know, investigation as well. So the next thing is to call for ultrasound. And if you are still confused, then you can have the CT done or magnetic resonance imaging. Okay, you check out for the clinical features of heptomegaly. Hello, get me right. Usually asymptomatic. Okay, depending on the underlying pathology anyway, but most of the times, it will be asymptomatic. The signs and symptoms are related to the underlying condition or conditions, okay? Then it's possible 
the patient presenting with optomegaly might have right upper chondral pain, depending on the cause or the definitive diagnosis. In the end, it could be a minor condition, which means now we're thinking about all these possible differential diagnoses, right? We've taken our history, we've checked out the signs, we've done our physical examination, we're back on ultrasound, we're not sure yet, we have the CT scan done, we have MRI done, all could be not activity in infertility per se, but would not give us anything, you know, to worry about. So it could be a minor condition, but it might be a very serious one. So we have to do it. We have to take good history. We have to be patient to have thorough physical examination. We have to call for the appropriate radiological investigation and get the definitive diagnosis of that enlarged liver. With that, I come to the end of this short presentation. Thanks for listening. Remember to share. Remember to subscribe. I appreciate that.